Welcome to another Mount Pisgah Arboretum virtual field trip. So today we're going to go wander back this way into the water garden trails. And this whole area is a wetland area. So that means that part of the year in the winter, there's a lot of standing water. But during the summer, it's quite dry. So all of the plants and animals that live in this wetland area have to be able to deal with a lot of water one part of the year and not very much water another part of the year. This bush back over here is an oso berry. And here are the berries right here. And they are kind of a green color at first and then they get reddish hued and then they turn a deep purple if the birds don't get them first. Usually the birds eat them before they get to the purple stage. And these are called oso berries. They're also called Indian plum because they do look like mini little plums. And there is a large pit inside. So there's not actually that much to eat on the fruit, but birds seem to really enjoy them. This tree that I'm next to right here alongside the path is a big leaf maple tree. This is what the tops of the big leaf maple trees look like. And here is a close-up of those big leaves that give the big leaf maple tree its name. But big leaf maple trees are often called the queen of the epiphytes because so many other plants like to grow on them. So right here we have a fungus, a shelf fungus, growing here. And there are a whole bunch of these little guys here and these are ferns, uh, licorice ferns. So licorice ferns are called licorice ferns because they have a rhizome that grows underneath the moss on trees, especially big leaf maple trees. And that rhizome is sometimes made into teas and it tastes kind of licorice-y flavored. So it's not the plant that licorice, like black licorice candy comes from, but it's a plant that has a licorice flavor to it if you make a tea or something out of it. Look what I found just a little bit further up the trunk on this big leaf maple tree. It's a Pacific sideband snail. You can see it's got um, like some red bands on its shell. That's where it gets its name. It's quite large snail. It's a native snail, so that means it's from here. It's not like the snails that you find in your garden munching all your plants. These snails are interested in native plants, so they like to eat fungus, and they like to eat mosses, and they help spread the spores of those things around when they eat them. Oh, this one is very nervous and shy, so every time I move, it's taking its little eyes back in, but here they come back out again. So those are its little eyes, and down below are how uh, it smells. They actually have a pretty good sense of smell. So we'll put this one back because it's not very excited to be held <laughs> right now. I'm going to put it back up on the tree. Whenever you find a snail or a slug out in the forest, you want to put it back right near where you found it because they do often have home territory, an area that they live in. And if you carry it along with you in your pocket or in your hand and then you drop it off somewhere else in the forest, it will not know where the food is in that area. So that's not its spot. So always, if you pick them up, be very gentle and then always put them back where you found them. So I'm gonna put this one back up on the bark of the tree because that's where it was. These flowers right over here are called larkspur or delphinium, and they're called larkspur because each of the flowers has spur on the back. So the nectar for the flower is in the very way back of here. So the things that pollinate these flowers are things with a very long tongue or a beak. So hummingbirds love these, and there are lots of hummingbirds on this trail because hummingbirds are one of the things that can pollinate these flowers with the long spur in the back. Here's an Anna's hummingbird, which is one of the hummingbirds that really likes to drink the nectar out of the larkspur flowers. This is a hummingbird nest that we found on this trail last spring. It was so small, it would fit in the palm of your hand easily, and the little eggs inside, there were two, 
were about the size of jelly beans. This nest is made out of lichens and mosses and spider web. Right behind me is this really cool tree where it's a big leaf maple tree. Big leaf maple trees are pretty good at doing this where they get knocked down for some reason. Maybe there was a windstorm at some point, maybe a flood because this area does get flooded quite often during high water. Who knows? But for some reason it got knocked over and then it just kept on growing back up towards the sun. So you've got this funny little like shelf shape down here that almost looks like a bench that the tree made and then it started going back up towards the sunlight. So it's a pretty cool tree to look for if you're ever on this trail. So these flowers behind me are called fridge cup and they're called that because each little flower looks like a tiny little cup and they've all got this little fringe around the sides that their petals makes. These are a favorite food of black-tailed deer that hang out over here. Here is a picture of one of those black-tailed deer that likes to eat the fringe cup at the arboretum. And this doe, doe is a female deer, she has a fawn. You can see that they both have the black tail that gives them their name. Black-tailed deer fawns are born without scent so that it's hard for predators to be able to find them. And they also have those white spots when they're young to help them blend in. And that's important because even though they can walk very quickly after they're born, they can't go very far. So their mothers will hide them in tall grasses and shrubs where the fawn will stay very, very still for hours at a time so that the mother can go out and forage and find things to eat and then she'll come back and nurse her baby after a while. So if you ever find a little fawn laying very still out in nature, you want to leave it because it's waiting for its mother to come back to it. This plant right next to me, this one here, is the Oregon State Flower. It's Oregon grape. It kind of looks like holly. If you know holly, it's got very stickery, pointy leaves. Here's what the Oregon grape berries and flowers look like. So those yellow flowers are our Oregon state flower. Here's the entrance to our wetland exhibit where you can come to learn more about the wetlands. So you enter through this tunnel back over here. Here behind me inside the exhibit, there are sliders that you can slide so you can look out onto the pond that's right next to the exhibit. On the front of the sliders, there's a clue about an animal or a plant that lives here in the wetland. You can sl guess, slide that, and then see the picture of what the animal or plant is. So it's a little bit of a guessing game you can do if you come here with your family. Here's the pond right next to the wetland exhibit. And you can see behind me that there are a lot of shrubs, lots of willows growing in the water, and then also pond lilies. So those are the large leaves that float on the surface of the pond. Frogs really like to hang out on them, and they will have pretty yellow flowers. So this is one of many bridges in the wetland area. Because it's so wet, we have to have a lot of bridges for the winter. So this tree right here is another one of those trees that has just fallen over and then sent out shoots up to keep growing. So this isn't another big leaf maple. This is our other tree that you see a lot in the wetland area here at Mount Pisgah Arboretum. This is an Oregon ash tree. It's another tree that really likes water. And, and here's what the leaves look like. It's got a compound leaf. So that means all of these are leaflet on one leaf. This is a plant that you really should know if you're wandering around in kind of wet areas or just in the forest around here, actually. We don't have a lot of it here at the Arboretum, but it's a good one to know. It's this plant right here. This is stinging nettle. So you might notice if you look closely on the stem, there are little tiny hairs. 
And if you touch one of those hairs, it will sting you. So that's the downside of stinging nettle. But stinging nettle is a great edible plant. So if you go to like natural food grocery stores, you can buy stinging nettle leaves. And if you cook them up, the stinging goes away and you can eat them. And they're really good for you. It's kind of like spinach. It tastes quite good. Okay, look closely at this picture of the pond. There's an animal hiding there. Can you find it? Let's look closer. I'll give you a hint. It's on one of the lily pads. Do you see it? There it is. It's a bullfrog. So bullfrogs really like to hang out on the lily pads at our pond. Bullfrogs are not native. So that means they're not from the Pacific Northwest. They're actually from the south of the United States. Bullfrogs are really cool, but unfortunately they're such good predators that they eat a lot of our native frogs. So it's not really great that they're living in our pond at the Arboretum. Another picture of the pond. And there are a couple more animals hiding here. They're on the back log, the log at the back of the pond in this picture. Let's get closer. Can you see them? There they are. The one on the right is another bullfrog. The one on the left is a western pond turtle. Western pond turtles are a native turtle. They're also a threatened species. That means that there's not very many of them left, mostly because their habitat has disappeared. There aren't as many ponds for them to live in anymore. And animals like the bullfrog, non-native animals, tend to eat the baby pond turtles. So not as many of them manage to survive and become adults. Because there's not very many pond turtles left, we're always really excited when we see them at our pond at the Arboretum. And the best place to look for them is on the logs because they like to hang out on the logs and bask in the sun. This plant right here is called thimbleberry and it will get a pretty white flower on it here and we'll have fruit that's edible. It's kind of like a raspberry. It's one of our native berries around here and thimbleberry has these big leaves that are called palmate because they're kind of like the shape of a palm and they're also quite soft. So some people call this plant toilet paper plant because if you're ever stuck in the woods and you need to go to the bathroom and you didn't bring any toilet paper, this right here is the plant to find. Well, this is the end of our trail for the day. Thanks so much for coming with me on our wetland trails. Hopefully someday you'll be able to come out with your family and see what you can find.